Pythagoras was born sometime between 600 and 590 BCE. His father was Menezarchus, an international merchant from Samos, a Greek island in the Aegean Sea, and his mother was Parthenus, a Greek Apollonian. While traveling abroad near Delphi in Greece, Parthenus requested Menezarchus visit the oracle to Apollo. The oracle informed the couple Parthenus was pregnant with a male child and instructed them to abstain from relations during the pregnancy. Parthenus changed her name to Pythesis, but no record exists of her surviving the birth of her son, Pythagoras. Pythagoras traveled extensively with his father, Nisarchus, during his formative years, and Nisarchus raised Pythagoras into the Median Persian cult of Zoroaster, the prophet and son of Ahura Mazda, the god of light. It is widely believed that Pythagoras was also initiated into the other religious cults of his day in all the lands he and his father traveled. These included, according to some, the Eleusinian mysteries of the Attica Peninsula, the Egyptian mysteries of Thebes, the Babylonian mysteries in Chaldea, and the cult of Adonis in Syria. Some believe it was from the Babylonian priestcraft while a prisoner in Chaldea that Pythagoras studied the theorem that he would later become most famous for inventing, the theorem for all right triangles that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Although the cause and date of his father's death remain unknown, it is recorded that Pythagoras himself traveled as far east as modern Afghanistan, where the Brahmins of Elephanta and Ellora in Hindustan called him Yavanshara, the Ionian teacher. Pythagoras finally settled in Samos, his father's home, where he lived until the age of about 35, under the rule of the tyrant Polycrates. Around the year 550 BCE, Pythagoras went into self-exile from Samos and founded a university of mathematics in Croton, Italy, where he lived and taught for around 20 years. By about age 55, Pythagoras' school had gained significant enough political influence in the Council of 1000, who ruled Croton, that when one of their politicians, history records his name as Cylon, although this is only a pseudonym for the younger mathematician Hippasus, refused to communalize his property, his discovery of the square root of two, to the cult of Pythagoras, and was thus rejected from cult membership, thrown off a boat to be exact, Hippasus appealed to the Council of 1000 to have Pythagoras tried for criminal conspiracy against the state. Pythagoras fled Croton somewhere between 530 and 495 BCE, narrowly escaping a fire set by Hippasus in a mob at Pythagoras' wife Milo's house with his disciples Archippus and Lysus. He fled from there to Regium, Italy, a port town near the island of Sicily where he parted with Archytas of Tarentum, another disciple, and from there set sail to Metapontum, in northeast Italy, the hometown of Hippasus, his would-be assassin, and took refuge in the temple there. He lived on sea cucumbers and honey until he eventually died of starvation in about 494 BCE, at around the age of 100 years. Modern exoteric history books record only one or at most two things about Pythagoras. The first is Euclid's 47th proposition in his Elements. However, only the originally 345 model of this axiom can really be attributed to Pythagoras directly. Another fact we can state from collectively accepted history is the fact Pythagoras formed a cult that believed all is number even though this quote to describe their belief can only be attributed to Aristotle and not to anyone who counted themselves as a member of the Pythagorean cult. So, while everyone knows that Pythagoras can be credited with the Pythagorean theorem triangle and that he believed all is number, in truth neither of these beliefs about him is factually accurate. Pythagoras may have learned of the Pythagorean theorem triangle either from the Babylonian mathematicians while a prisoner there, or else from the Chinese Zhu Bi Zhuan Jing while living in Hindustan.
Likewise, Aristotle's assertion that Pythagoras believed all is number is in the context of his denouncing their beliefs, alike the manner of the early Christian fathers who denounced the heretical beliefs of the Gnostics. So, if we know nothing about Pythagoras from the exoteric schools that teach us about him, we must delve into esoteric teachings to learn more about his actual teachings to his cult, the Pythagorean worshippers of math and others. The school of Pythagoras in Croton was based on two levels of initiation. The first group of his personal students became the first group of his school's teachers, and they in turn taught the second class of Pythagoreans. The outer school of second class students was called the Mathematicoi, and the inner school of Pythagorean teachers and his personal disciples was called the Acousmaticoi. The Mathematicoi studied mathematics and were called philosophers, meaning seekers of wisdom, and the Acousmatica kept Pythagoras' personal moral sayings and were considered sages, or those who had found wisdom already. While Pythagoras was alive, he served as the dean of his school in Croton, Italy. However, when he died and his school was banished as a terrorist cult, the Acousmaticoi and the Mathematicoi parted ways. The Acousmaticoi took a vow of silence and did not consider the Mathematicoi true Pythagoreans. Since that time, many great thinkers throughout history have belonged to the esoteric inner school of Pythagoras, the Acousmaticoi, yet have also publicly denounced those who practice number theories and mathematics. The remaining texts of the earliest Acousmaticoi reveal the Pythagorean origination of the keeping of moral axioms in a list and of attributing them all to a single source, even though many different people may have said them. This genre of wisdom literature or mysticism was later employed in such works as the Gnostic Apocryphal Gospel of Thomas and the Dhammapada of the Buddha. In particular, the teachings of Pythagoras' own acousmaticoi moral axioms on reincarnation confirm his originating the Hermetic Trismegistus cult's Asclepian literature, which itself would serve as the moral foundation of Christ's Sermon on the Mount. The acousmaticoi kept sayings of two kinds, religious, quotes and descriptions of gods, and moral, sayings on what is the best way for man to live. The school of the Mathematicoi was as complex a university devoted to multiple studies in philosophical idealisms as was later attributed by Plato to Socrates. It consisted of five separate sections, including the Acousmaticoi teachers themselves. The four wings of Mathematicoi learned philosophy, including ethics and physics, polymath, including arithmetic and geometry, music theory, including the Tetractus and Subcontrary Scales, and astronomy, including astrology and Sumbola, or the recording and interpretation of omens. According to the cosmology of the Mathematicoi, particularly to Philolos, the first generation of Pythagorean cult member to publish his works in Croton some thirty years after Pythagoras' death, there are two forms of number that comprise all there is. The first kind is even numbers, and these indicate rotation around in a clockwise direction, and are called unlimiteds. The second kind is odd numbers, indicating a counterclockwise orientation for rotation, and called by Philolos limiters. The odd limiters represent exterior influences in our environment that shape and determine our short-term fates and ultimate destinies. The even unlimiteds represent interior mental ideas that we can apply to and invisibly overlap to co-create with reality. At the center of the Pythagorean cosmos was the hearth, which represented one surrounding zero. Thus, harmonia followed in the form of the number two, and three was the first number of the mathematical.